let's see about thumb sucking habit what is thumb sucking definition as a placement of thumb or one or more fingers in varying depth into the mouth it is a most prevalent oral habit most children give up this activity by 3 and a half to 4 years of age if the habit is arrested before the eruption of maxillary permanent incision there is no effect on the alignment or eruption of the permanent teeth if not treated properly the damage may be severe so thumb sucking habit is a placement of thumb or finger into the mouth factors frequency duration and intensity of the habit these are the trident factors for the thumb sucking habit frequency duration and intensity clinical aspect of the thumb sucking three phases phase 1 is normal and subclinical significant sucking seen from birth to 3 years if vigorous sucking it may carry to the next phase preventive measure is physiological pacifier phase 2 is clinically significant 3 to 7 years of age it may be due to anxiety and it is the best time to solve dental problem phase 3 is intractable sucking more serious problem will require psychotherapy so phase 1 and phase 2 phase 3 phase 1 is normal and subclinical theories of thumb sucking psychosexual psychoanalytical theory by sigmund Freud, oral dry theory by sears and weiss rooting reflex by benjamin learning theory by davidson these are the theories of thumb sucking etiological factors socioeconomic status working mother in the neonate numbers of siblings age of the child order of the birth of the child social adjustment and stress these are the etiological factors for the thumb sucking habit diagnosis history questions about trident factors history related to emotional status a extra oral examination involved digits appear red and clean and have a short fingernail that is dishpan thumb so these are the extra oral examination finger is very clean and short fingernail showing short fingernail and it is very clean so it is called dishpan finger effect of thumb sucking effect on the maxilla proclination of maxillary incisa increased snea angle increased arch length that is very important is proclination of maxillary incisa it is very important feature or feature on the maxilla here these teeth showing proclinear proclined upper incisors and high palatal vault effect on the mandible retroclination of the mandibular incisa increased mandibular intermolar width mandible is more distally placed related to the maxilla here in maxilla there is proclination of the incisor in mandible there is retroclination of the mandible or incisor and mandibular intermolar width is increased effect on the interarch relationship over jet is increased over bite is decreased posterior cross bite anterior open bite narrow nasal floor and high palatal vault why there is posterior cross bite because of the interdistal interdistance between the molar of molar on the upper arch is reduced here this picture showing anterior open bite this picture showing proclination of the upper incisors irregular in shape effect on the lip placement and function lip incompetence hyperactive lower lip hypotonic upper lip that is important the hyperactive lower lip and hypotonic upper lip this patient showing proclined anti upper anteriors and incompetence upper lip effect on the tongue placement and function tongue thrusting lip to tongue rest position lower tongue position other effect affect psychological health risk of malpositioning of the teeth and jaws deformation of digits and speech defect lisping produces lisping these are the effect of the 
தம்ஸ் அ கிங் ஹேபிட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் கவுன்சிலிங் ஆர் ஏஜ் அப்ராப்ரியேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன் டு த சைல்ட் எக்ஸாம்பிள் கிளினிக்கல் ஃபோட்டோகிராஃப்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ரீபர்கர்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தீஸ் ஹேபிட் ஸ்டோன் மாடல்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சில்ட்ரன் வித் டேமேஜ் டு த ஓர் ஃபேஷியல் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஃபர்க்ளினேஷன் ஆஃப் த அப்பர் ஃப்ரண்ட் டீத் அன்அக்செப்டபிள் அப்பியரன்ஸ் அண்ட் ப்ரொஃபைல் ஆஃப் த சில்ட்ரன் வித் தீஸ் ஹேபிட் ஸோ கிவ் கவுன்சிலிங் show photograph see your uh, face that is very proclined upper anteriors so it is not looking good so that way that like psychological approach dunlop's theory of beta hypothesis best way to break a habit is by conscious purposeful repetitions that is the child should sit in front of the large mirror and be asked to observe himself as the intelligence in the habit so how frequently he is putting his finger into the mouth this is called beta hypothesis dunlop's theory of beta hypothesis positive reinforcement posting a calendar on the noticeable location and keeping track of the habit free days can give children a sense of pride rewards in progress in reduction of frequency of habit give some gift for patient in free of days digital reminders plastic bandage or flavored substance on the thumb or long sleeve gown for the night time subconscious thumb sucking it will be very helpful digital reminders give any bitter object on the finger so they not place on the fingers on the mouth these are the finger reminders appliance therapy when the above mentioned interventions did not succeed an uh, intraoral appliance is used blue grass appliance modified blue grass appliance quad helix hogrex spurs triple loop activator tongue connector appliance palatal crib appliance are used palatal crib appliance is fixed or removable also used it is also act as a reminder reduces the pressure and harmful pressure on the oral structure once the habit is stopped the appliance is left in the mouth for an additional 3 to 6 months to minimize the chances of relapse these are the all appliances are used in the thumb sucking habit let's see about individual appliances these are the blue grass appliances these are the modified blue grass appliance to prevent thumb sucking habit these are the quad helix appliance this is palatal crib appliance other method using elastic bandage to over the arm extending from below the elbow to above it it may take 6 to 8 weeks success in children who have stopped the habit while arms are costed for broken bones so we bandage the elbow to arm so we they are not moving their 